This is the continuation of the best cybersecurity certifications for the year 2022. But this time, we will go to the expert level. Those on the top of the mountain. And if you missed the best cybersecurity certification video for the lower tiers, kindly check the link in the description below. This is for those who are already working as a security professionals and want to improve their skills and move to another level. Or those people who just want to validate their skills and knowledge. Also, those individuals who are already working in IT and want to shift to a more security focused role. Cybersecurity career is broad. That's why I group these certifications into multiple paths. I also base this list on many different criteria, such as cost, market value, market demand, exam content, potential pay, and there is one more, recertification strategy. For those who are new to this channel, welcome. I am your host, name is Dean Armada, and what is my qualification doing this video again? I have over 60 IT certifications and it keeps growing. I started my career as a programmer, then became a web and Linux administrator, then a network engineer, then a security specialist, then solutions manager, became a global instructor and traveled the world, been a hiring manager multiple times, helped thousands of people build their IT career and helped them move from their poor countries to the United States, Australia, Canada, UK, and Singapore. I am your career and certification captain. And on this channel, we talk about tech career and certification, trivia and tutorials in cybersecurity, trivia and tutorials in cloud and data center, and my journey as an IT instructor. So feel free to check out the rest of the channel and consider subscribing. First path. Security engineering, also known as security infrastructure, these are vendor-specific certifications. And under Cisco, we have Cisco Certified Internetwork Expert, or CCIE, in security. It's an eight-hour hands-on lab, and there is only one exam. Well, assuming that you are already CCNP security, it's very popular and considered by many the best technical certification for the past decades. It covers many different technologies, such as next generation firewall, next generation IPS, VPNs, identity management, email, DNS, web security, and many others. And we also have F5 Certified Solution Expert or F5 CSE in security. F5 CSE is only a written exam, 70 questions, in 105 minutes. It covers web application security through Application Security Manager or ASM. This is the web application firewall solution of F5. And it also covers securing both enterprise and data center environment using application delivery controller. F5 CSE is not a lab exam, but it's extremely difficult. Eligibility to take this exam is difficult enough. So you have to be an F5 CTS in ASM, APM, and LTM. LTM is not even here in the list, but assuming you're already F5 CTS in ASM and APM, you need to pass F5301A and 301B exam to be an F5 CTS in LTM. Palo Alto Networks has no expert level certifications. Checkpoint has an expert level cert CCSM and CCSM Elite but it's not highly recognized. I also know many Palo Alto and Checkpoint Network Security Engineers stops their certification journey after PCNSE and CCSE. Second path, penetration testing certifications or the offensive side of security. Now, this is a little special because really, we have three different specializations. I didn't mention this from the mid slash professional level video because it was only good for four certs per path. These specializations are the generic penetration testing, 
such as OSCP, ECPPT, and we also have the web penetration testing such as OSWA and EWPT. And another one, this is the exploit development. So from tier two, I only picked the genetic and web penetration testing certifications. Here in tier three expert level, it's worth mentioning all three specializations. And these three specializations are available on both offensive security and e-learn security. So under offensive security, all these are 300 level core certifications. And I consider this as lower expert level certifications. So first, we have the Offensive Security Experience Penetration Tester, or OSEP. This is a generic penetration testing certification, and it includes bypassing and evading defense. Number two, we have the Offensive Security Web Expert, or OSWE. This is just an advanced web penetration testing certification. And number three, Offensive Security Exploit Developer, or OSED. This teaches how to bypass security mitigations with created exploits using programming skills, such as Python and assembly. All of these Offensive Security 300 level exams are two-day hands-on lab plus another day for documentation. E-Learn Security Extreme Level Certifications. I also consider this as lower expert level certifications, and it's a little easier than offensive security 300 level exams. First, we have the eLearn Security Certified Penetration Tester Extreme, or ECPTX. It's an advanced level penetration testing certification, and we also have number two, eLearn Security Web Application Penetration Tester Extreme, or EWAPTX. It's another advanced, but it focuses on web application penetration testing. Um, number three, we have eLearn Security Certified Exploit Developer, or ECXD. This teaches both Windows and Linux exploit development and software vulnerability identification. Again, using programming skills, such as Python and assembly. All extreme level exam is a seven day long lab exam and another seven day for reporting. All offensive security 300 level exam and e-learn security extreme level exams have no prerequisite and you can take them directly. But here's the interesting part. If you obtain all three offensive security certifications, you will attain OSCE3 or the Offensive Security Certified Expert 3. So that is my lower expert level certifications. We have a higher expert level certification and that is Offensive Security 400 level certification course. Uh, there's only one, Offensive Security Exploitation Expert, OSEE. It's the most difficult exploit development certification and Offensive Security actually recommends completing the 300 level certification first before registering for this course. Training is only delivered in a live classroom environment. And for the exam, you have 72 hours to develop and document exploits. Third path, Security Operations and Analysis. Not too many expert level certifications under this path. But surprisingly, eLearn Security has one. This is eLearn Security Certified Threat Hunting Professional, or ECTHP. This is a two-day hands-on lab exam and another two-day to write the reports. It focuses on using tools such as Open Source Threat Intelligence Platform to collect IOC or Indication of Compromise. It also focuses on security information and event management, or CM, such as Plunk and ELK. Lots of network system and web logs and event analysis. So basically, you look for threats and malware. Sounds fun, huh? What else do we got? Nothing. Offensive security doesn't have one. 
Cisco is still in the process of developing Cisco Cyber Ops Expert Exam, but we still don't know the details. Security Management and Policies, Last Path. First, we have Certified Information System Security Professional or CISSP. One of the most popular, highly recognized cybersecurity certification. Designed for experienced security practitioners, managers, or even executives with knowledge across a wide array of security practices and principles. CISP exam covers eight domains, security and risk management, asset security, security architecture and engineering, security operations, etc. Candidates must have a minimum of five years work experience in two or more of these eight domains. But ISC2 can waive a year of experience. For example, if you have a college degree related to security or approved security certifications, this will satisfy one year of experience. Certifications like Security Plus, CCNP Security, or OSCP. Most of what you see here in the presentation, can you take CISP exam while you're still working the five year required work experience? Actually, yes. When you pass the exam, you would be certified as an associate of ISC2. And this works while still working with that required five year minimum experience. CISSP is a written exam. This contains 100 to 150 multiple choice questions in 100 minutes. Next is CISM or Certified Information Security Manager from ISACA. I would say this is less technical and more management certification compared to CISSP. So the requirement is this. You need to register first and pay 50 US dollars as they will assess your application before taking the exam. Uh, you should have a minimum of five years work experience in professional information security management. And they would also waive one year if you have a skilled base or a technical security certifications like Security Plus or CASP Plus. We don't have the complete list, but you can try adding other technical certifications like CCNP Security or OSCP in your application. CISM is a written exam. It contains 150 multiple choice questions in 240 minutes or four hours. Both CISSP and CISM I would say they are lower expert level, same as what we have in security penetration testing path. We have a higher expert level in this path, and these are CISSP concentrations. These are first CISSP, Information System Security Architecture Professional, or ISSAP. This certification focuses on cybersecurity architecture. We also have the second CISSP Information System Security Engineering Professional or ISSEP. This focuses on cybersecurity engineering. And we have the last CISSP Information System Security Management Professional or ISSMP focuses on cybersecurity management. One of the requirements is, of course, you should be a CISSP in good standing with two-year experience in one domain under a specific concentration. And all three concentration certification exam is 125 questions in three hours. That's the list of my best cybersecurity certifications for expert level or tier three. Hit like button if you find this video useful and interesting. Some of you may not agree with me, that's fine. Leave your comment and I'm open for discussions and debate. What's the recertification strategy for? I will talk about this in another video. I will also be using the cybersecurity certification path, this slide, for another video about cybersecurity career roadmap. So stay tuned.